Well, thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin with Halo Power Solutions. We are Short Parts, most trusted electricians. We've got a great topic we're covering today, hot tubs. So I think it's important that homeowners have a good idea of what's involved after they make the purchase of their hot tub, because there's a lot of things that your hot tub salesperson may not tell you. We get asked a lot, do I need a permit for my hot tub? And the answer is absolutely yes. You actually need two permits. The first permit you need will be a building permit. I'm going to put the links uh, in the comments below so you can actually see what's involved for you as a homeowner to get the permits. Um, this will be if you live in an Edmonton area, Sherwood Park or Fort Saskatchewan. So just check the comments below, you'll see the links. The other permit you need is an electrical permit. And this is where you want to hire a good licensed contractor to come in, take care of pulling the electrical permit and do all the work for you. That way you get it inspected and you know everything's good. So when you're applying for the building permit, and that's something you need to do as the homeowner, um, there's some information you're gonna have to provide because the municipality needs to know that you're putting the hot tub in a proper location. So a few things they're gonna be looking for is the location in regards to the property line, because your hot tub needs to be a minimum of one meter away from your property line. The other thing they're going to require from you is that you have a fully fenced yard or your hot tub has a proper locking cover. This is important because you don't want a, uh, you know, a small kid wandering into your yard and seeing your tub and potentially drowning. It's a horrible thought, but uh, that's why these, uh, these rules are in place. Another important uh, consideration when you're placing your hot tub is the uh, utility lines coming into your yard. You can't put your hot tub over top of a utility right away. So it's important that you know where the lines are running before you get your hot tub put in place. Well, let's say you want to install your hot tub on your deck. You may have to supply the municipality with a stamped engineer drawing saying that your deck will support the weight of that hot tub. You can imagine that tub filled with water it could be 5,000 pounds of weight there. So this is really important. So let's talk about the location of your hot tub and the existing electrical in your yard. We see this all the time where hot tubs have been put in place, there were never any permits or inspections done, and the hot tub is two or three feet away from the electrical unit. So there's some key information here. First of all, you need to know that your hot tub cannot be located within three meters of your electrical meter or electrical service equipment on the outside of your house. Another thing you need to know is that your hot tub cannot be located within 1.5 meters of your outside GFCI plug on your house. Again, these are things that we see all the time when uh, homeowners go ahead and just purchase a hot tub and get uh, some Kijiji electrician to hook it up. No permits, no inspections, big problems down the line, especially when you go to sell your house. So let's talk about the actual electrical wiring needed in order to get your hot tub up and running. First of all, like I mentioned, you definitely 100% need an electrical permit. The electrical permit is pulled by your certified electrical contractor. So remember, you as the homeowner, you take care of the building permit. The electrician will take care of the electrical permit and make sure that the inspection gets completed. Now. As far as the power running to the tub, you are going to need a 240 volt circuit ran out to your hot tub. Most hot tubs draw 40, 50, or 60 amps. Now, depending where your hot tub is going to be located in your yard, uh, this can really affect how much work is involved for the electrician to get power out to the tub. So, the 240 volt circuit needs to be GFCI protected. Now, if you've already bought your hot tub, they may have sold you what's called a spa pack. 
This ball pack is the GFCI breaker inside an enclosure and typically this is mounted outside on the exterior of your home near the hot tub. The GFCI circuit needs to be located at least three meters away from your hot tub, but we also put it typically within sight so that it's uh, easy to find in the event that you had to shut it off or your uh, hot tub service company was out and had to maintain it and shut it off. costs of running electricity to your hot tub. It's not cheap. Uh, you can expect to pay about $1,500. That's a typical price, including the electrical permit to get power ran out to your hot tub. But again, it really depends where your hot tub is gonna be located. If you're putting it far out in your yard, uh, maybe it's located in the gazebo or something like that, uh, or, or a location that's not you know, immediately outside your home. The cost can go up tremendously. The cost of the cable to run out to the hot tub is very expensive. The cost of the GFI spa pack with the breaker inside is also very expensive. And depending how much work it takes for the electrician to get power from your electrical panel to the outside of your house where the spa pack is gonna be located, that also um, can greatly affect the cost, especially if your basement is finished. So I always recommend homeowners get a quote ahead of time, even before you bought the hot tub or even looked at a hot tub, because these additional expenses can really blindside you when you've already spent $15,000 on your dream hot tub. Before you buy your hot tub, there's one other thing you need to be aware of. Most homes in the Edmonton, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan area have a 100 amp, 120, 240 volt electrical service ran to their home. This is very typical. Now, let's say you have a 1800 square foot home. You've got an electric stove. You've got electric dryer. You have installed air conditioning. And now you go and purchase a hot tub. Well, chances are, that electrical load with your new hot tub is going to exceed what your 100 amp service will allow when we do a load calculation. This has really become an issue uh, when homeowners already purchase the tub and then realize that their electrical service is not large enough to accommodate the load of the tub, the air conditioning, the stove in their home, the dryer and any other uh, any other loads in the house. So when this happens, you've got two options. You can do a service upgrade to your home and depending on what area you're in and whether you have an overhead or an underground uh, utility line running to your house, uh, this can become extremely expensive. We've had quotes from uh, from AppCor for underground service upgrades to some of our clients' homes, uh, exceeding thirty to forty thousand dollars, due to the amount of work and upgrades to the overall infrastructure in their uh, immediate area, just to upgrade the service to their house from one hundred to one hundred and fifty or two hundred amps. So, uh, huge consideration there. The electrical inspector, if he inspects the installation and suspects that with the hot tub in place it's going to exceed the 100 amp capacity of your 100 amp service he's going to ask your electrician to provide a load calculation we do these load calculations all the time it's a very simple mathematical uh, worksheet we fill out and uh, in, in my experience as soon as you have air conditioning and a and a hot tub, you're typically over your 100 amp service. Unless you have a gas stove and a gas dryer, that, that's, uh, that is one consideration. So what do you do? Well, the service upgrade's one option, very expensive. The second option solution that we are, uh, we're doing more and more for our clients is putting in an energy management system. And there's a few different models on the market that, uh, that are available, but typically these energy management systems 
monitor the amount of electricity that is being drawn uh, overall on your main service. And if it detects that the, uh, the overall load, electrical load on your service is too high, it will shut off your hot tub automatically for a set amount of time, usually about half an hour until uh, you know, the other, uh, other devices in your home that you're using start to uh, power down. Maybe you're, maybe you're doing laundry, the air conditioning's on and uh, you're running the stove, cooking a turkey and the hot tub starts heating. That, that may be a situation where it gets close to the uh, max, uh, max allowable amp pass that your service will, uh, will allow. So the energy management systems, we're putting more and more of them in and uh, they, are, uh, they are code compliant. So it's a good solution. Um, so you can expect that if you were getting your hot tub wired in and you required an energy management system as well, uh, you, know, you need to budget at least, at the very least, $2,500 to $3,000 for that setup. So another consideration, another cost you may not be aware of when you, uh, when you sign on the line for that new hot tub. So what does it cost per month to run that hot tub? Well, it depends. First of all, it depends how large of a tub it is, how much power it draws, and how large of a heater it has in it. Other factors are how, how well built the hot tub is. It's, it's kind of like your home. If you have a well-built, insulated home, in the wintertime, that house is gonna be more uh, efficient, hold the heat better. A well-built hot tub with a good quality insulated cover is gonna hold the heat better, and uh, the heater's not gonna have to cycle on and, on and off as much to, uh, to keep the tub hot. But if you're using it all the time, you got the cover open, that heater is gonna be heating probably constantly, especially when it's really cold outside because you're gonna try and keep that water uh, nice and comfortable. So, you know, in, in my experience in speaking with homeowners that already have hot tubs, it's safe to say you can expect $50 a month minimum uh, to run that tub if you're gonna keep it going year round and especially in the winter time and depending what kind of use you're, uh, you're having with it, um, that could be, could be more, so things to consider ahead of time. So I hope this information has been helpful to you, especially if you are considering purchasing a hot tub. It's exciting when you go into the, uh, the hot tub store and they've got these beautiful tubs set up and there's water in them and they're, they're, <laughs> they're ready to go. And uh, especially if you dip inside one or maybe your neighbor has one and, and you enjoy it so much, uh, do your homework and uh, make sure you contact your municipality Find out what's involved as far as their uh, their requirements and what's needed to uh, get your building permit in place. And definitely, definitely hire a certified electrical contractor that look after pulling your permit, doing a quality, safe installation. Uh, make sure you get the hot tub uh, inspected when it's all said and done. And then you will know that you have done it correctly and you can sit back, soak, and enjoy the, uh, the investment you've made in this beautiful tub. So thanks again for joining me. I do ask that uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, like it, share it if you're on Facebook, and if you're on our YouTube channel, uh, I'd love for you to uh, leave some comments, let me know what you think, and uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Kevin with Halo Power Solutions, and we are Shore Park's most trusted electricians.